Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Okay, so I am very well aware that all of my videos are like an hour long when they're the true crime videos. So today I am going to try with all my heart and soul to cut this thing down, okay? You know what it is, y'all? I'm gonna be real. I love to talk, right? And because I love to talk, and I feel like there's like this little connection and community being built between you guys and myself, I can't stop. So I wanna tell you guys every single little nitty gritty, but for the sake of time, because I know everybody does not have an hour to sit there, I'm going to cut that out. So let's jump right into it. You guys know the whole intro, da 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 da, and blah blah, blah. thumbs up, subscribe, da 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 da. Let's go, all right, on our way. So, if you're new here, thank you. I'm so glad that you stumbled upon my page. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're not new and you're returning, thank you so much. Y'all already know, because I try to write everybody back, okay? My name is Jen. I did about a 10 year prison sentence in the state of Florida. I was released almost two years ago. Basically, I was in prison with a lot of women that are on Snapped, 48 Hours, Dateline, Women Who Kill, Couples Who Kill, and all of that. So. I like to give you guys the actual story, like a true crime YouTuber, and then give you like the real tea on what they're like in prison. So today we're going to West Palm Beach, Florida, and we're going to go catch up with a little girl named Linda Pedroza. Linda Pedroza is a Hispanic female that was born January 18th, 1983. Now, Linda had a Puerto Rican mother. But I will tell you this, her mother did not like to claim Puerto Rican um, nationality or anything like that. She wanted to be recognized as Cuban. Um, I'm not really sure why that was but i will tell you that linda said in prison that it was because her mother thought that cubans had a better reputation in the united states that they were looked at as a more like affluent hispanic culture right instead of puerto ricans whom i don't know what she thought of but apparently she didn't want to be identified as that and she didn't think too highly of the puerto rican community so her mother's name is isabel pedroza Now, Linda said a lot of things in prison that I couldn't quite find online to confirm or verify. So when I researched this story, I was like, well, dang, either she's a wha whole whopping liar or this biosh is like telling the truth and they just do not have all the facts. I'm going to go with she's a whopping liar, but we'll get there. Okay, y'all. So we're home with little Linda. You know, she's like, about five or six maybe seven now and her dad is a drinker so Linda is starting to realize okay dad's a drinker and my parents fight an awful lot so she does what a lot of kids sadly do which is try to be the piece try to be the glue try to be the thing that keeps the family together and you know kids have a way of internalizing things so sometimes they try to but in the middle and make everything happy you know they're just natural little peacemakers for the most part so while her parents were having these volatile arguments and while all of this drinking and craziness was going on on the father's end and the mother was just fed up little linda was trying to really just make this a happy home for herself she was unfortunately for her an only child so she bore the brunt of everything that happened she felt it all she saw it all she experienced it all firsthand right so linda is in this hispanic culture household and in hispanic families it is not it's frowned upon to like put your business out in the streets you don't put your business out there you don't go gossip to the neighbors everything is kept within the household very quiet very hush hush on on the outside like all appearances are great life is perfect and everybody has the perfect little family right which really sucks it sucks for everybody involved because you're walking on eggshells and it sucks for the kids because you always have to keep up this facade that life is perfect and in reality at home it's like a freaking war zone so this is what she was experiencing on the outside her mother isabel pedroza 
she wanted everything and by all appearances for their family to be this like perfect little unit but inside of those walls in the home it was constant fighting the father was constantly drinking he was verbally abusive and he was just very demeaning to the mother isabel so linda is watching this this is not a good example for her to grow up and see what a man or what a relationship should look like but this was the only example she had okay so moving right along Let's fast forward a few years when Linda's parents, Isabel and her husband, they have just had it. They are fighting and fighting and fighting. And this starts to take a toll on little Linda in the adolescent years. Like when you have parents that are not adequate role models and you have a child that is witnessing all of this fighting and dysfunction, they essentially become the collateral damage because they don't have adequate role models and they don't have proper outlets to talk about what's going on, to release that stress and that anxiety, to really just let go of all the BS, right? So in her adolescent years, she starts unraveling and she starts spiraling. And instead of getting into things that are positive, she starts to rebel and naturally her grades start to fail. She starts smoking and drinking and she basically becomes involved in anything and everything rebellious that a child should not get involved in when they're entering the adolescent years, right? So while Linda is spiraling in her life in pretty much every aspect, Isabel, her mom, is going through it with the dad, right? Now he's drinking so much, he's like hardly ever home. And with that being said, Isabel is like, okay, I can't not control, I can't not, I cannot control any aspect in my personal relationship with my husband. So I'm gonna really like hunker down and try to control everything that's going on with my daughter in our relationship, right? So now she's like laser focused on Linda and controlling her life. When I say controlling her life, I mean trying to get her on the right path. But if you have an overbearing frame of mind and you have an issue where you've lost control in pretty much your entire personal life, this is an area where you're going to really, really go probably a little bit above and beyond to control, right? So this was this made for a horrible recipe for Linda because... Now she's got this mother who's got anger, aggravation, and all this uck spilling over into their relationship that she is now, I guess, projecting essentially onto Linda and their relationship, right? So her mother becomes super overbearing, super overbearing. I want you guys to remember all these details because I am going to tell you what Linda said in prison. This biash, woo, she was another kind of out there y'all i'm not even kidding like i actually knew this one really well this chick really well we we had some run-ins we had some run-ins so now linda is 16 and the noose around her life is so freaking tight by her mother isabel that she needs an outlet she does manage to get a job and this is great for her because the thing is, you guys, you got to think like, yeah, maybe you don't want to work 24-7 when you're a teenager. You want to be out with your friends. But when you're not allowed to have anyone over, you're not allowed to have a cell phone, you're not allowed to talk to anyone, you're not allowed to date, heck yeah, a job's going to become your outlet because you can be free there, right? So she starts working at the mall at a little chicken joint, and she starts working her behind off. So while Linda is at work one day, she is enjoying her little bit of freedom from her controlling mother, Isabel, and she meets Antoine Wright. A 23-year-old guy who was recently released from prison and has every bad boy attribute and appeal that somebody rebelling in Linda's situation could be attracted to recipe for disaster okay seriously y'all bad news so he walks in and she is automatically smitten 
I use that word a lot in videos, y'all. It's weird. It's such a like odd word to use. But nonetheless, she is smitten with Mr. Antoine Wright, okay? He's older. She's attracted to his bad boy appeal. And he just got out of prison. So, hey, win, win, win all around, right? What a better way to piss your mom off than to start messing with Antoine. So even though Antoine is six years older than Linda, he really puts on his charm, his charm, his, what the, his charm, right? He puts that game on. He comes to visit her every time she's at work. She's now looking forward to seeing him every shift. He really romances her. He starts opening up to her and he, you know, starts telling her about his past and his prison sentence. And with that, she reciprocates by opening up about her mother and her controlling ways and how she feels suffocated and all of this stuff. So now they're building like a very deep and intimate bond based on their past mishaps or their past unfortunates or their past mistakes or whatever they're currently living that's causing them pain or aggravation. And now the bond is getting real, okay? So Antoine confides in Linda that he was released from prison three months prior to meeting her, like 90 days, Linda. Anyways, she's a teenager, so we're gonna try to overlook this. But yeah, y'all, he was released 90 days before meeting her. He was charged with an aggravated battery or assault. I'm not quite sure which one with the weapon. And basically he downplays the whole situation. But to be real at this point, doesn't even matter because Linda probably would have just been more attracted to him the worse the conviction was or the crime was because she just thought that he was this rough tough thug that would protect her with this athletic build and this bad criminal past and like don't mess with my man type stuff because he's gonna get in that ass you know like that type of thing and she felt cool she felt like you know i'm that biosh so hey is what it is right so they go along their merry way and continue this relationship So Antoine and Linda start officially dating, and when they start officially dating, their friends say that they literally never saw them apart and never saw either one with anyone else. Linda and Antoine were attached at the hip, conjoined like two peas in a pot. Is it pod or pot? Can somebody please tell me in the comments, is it two peas in a pot or two peas in a pod? And another thing, whenever I ask people questions like that, now they're always like, oh, just like Google it. You can look it up. And I'm always like, oh, yeah, you freaking can. And by the way, Google, I don't know if it's like an open edit policy, but half the stuff on there is wrong. Just want y'all to know. Okay, I'm sure y'all probably know. But anyways, I just had to get that off my chest real quick. Okay, back to the story. So, anywho, basically what happens now is these two are flying high, in love, inseparable, and like this is the best thing that's ever happened to either one of them. Antoine's got a place to crash when Isabel is Isabel's the mom. Isabel is at work and you know Linda's sharing stuff with him and he's kind of bumming off of her and using her although he probably really did like her. So you know there was a lot of perks for him just coming out of prison 90 days prior and for her you know it was a big stick it to her mom so yeah. But one day, because they had been doing this now for a while where he was coming over while Isabel, the mother, was at work and they were hanging out in the bed, not the bedroom, the bed, with no clothes on together. Okay, y'all got me. So, while they're hanging out in the bed, naked, naked, guess what happens? Isabel comes home early. I said it, y'all. Isabel came home early. I'm telling you, those Spanish mamas have some, like, spidey senses when their antennas go up you cannot get away with anything you could fart the wrong way and those spanish mamas will know they know they be knowing baby okay anyway so isabel comes home boom she busts through the door and what does she see nakey linda nakey antoine so she flips her shit, y'all. I'm talking, she flips her lid like there's no ifs, ands, or buts. This is the end of the end of the end. This is the beginning of the end for everybody involved. The three people that just went through that 
situation in that room, all of their lives were about to be drastically changed and some of their lives were unfortunately about to come to an end. So Linda's mother, Isabel, is outraged, right? Linda's 17. She's still a minor. Antoine is 23. They're having, they're knocking bonky donkeys, right? They're, they're doing it. And Linda is like, no, you know, it's, it's consensual. We're okay. But Isabel's trying to hear none of that. And she's basically telling him as he's grabbing his pants and running out the door, I'm going to press charges against you. It's going to be a sexual charge. And if you don't get out of here and never see my daughter again, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to follow through with it. So think about somebody who's just been released from prison and Antoine's tripping. He's flipping his noggin. He is out there. He's like, oh my God, this lady is going to get me seriously cased up and like, no, I'm not having it. Linda is pleading her case and her mother basically says, okay, I will not call the police, but if I catch you with him one more time, call him the police. He's going to jail. That's it. That's all. Period. Point blank. So now we've got a freaking issue. And does the story end there? No, it doesn't end there. Because if it ended there, I wouldn't have been in prison with nutbag Linda. Okay? So let's get to the rest of the story. So to pacify Isabel, Linda promises that she will not see Antoine ever again. It's completely over. And I just want to say something. All she wanted for her daughter were good things. Like she wanted her daughter on the right path. It wasn't like she was doing bad things to her daughter. You don't want your daughter to be with this guy who brings nothing to the table, who has nothing to offer you, is much older, and is clearly not steering you in the direction of going to school and do the right thing for your life and your future. So yeah, I don't want you to see him, and there's nothing wrong with that. And like I said, maybe her delivery or her approach was a little overbearing and a little skewed, but nonetheless, like she wasn't steering her daughter in the wrong direction. She wasn't telling her daughter anything that was wrong. She was really just trying to be a good mom that wanted good things for her kid. You know what I mean? It was just the fucked up part of this story. So now, even though Linda has promised that she will never see Antoine again, of course that's not gonna happen. So she is sneaking around. They're still seeing each other. They're basically on every corner, hanging out together, trying to get as much time and sneak and steal as many moments as they possibly can, okay? And while Isabel's hands are full with Linda and trying to keep up with her and everything that she's doing, Andres, whom is Isabel's husband and Linda's father, I haven't said his name because he just seemed like he was just like irrelevant and totally not helpful in these people's lives or in this story. So I just kept calling him the father or the husband. But his name was Andres. And Anyways, he shows up one night and he wants to go out drinking. And even though he's contributing diddly squat uh, to the family, he demands that Isabel hooks him up with some money so he can go out drinking. Like, your daughter is dating this guy who is not garbage. And all you can think about is coming to get money from your wife whom you mistreat and so that you can go out drinking. Like... Hmm, you know, it might not be Linda's fault that she's as narcissistic and self-centered and jacked up as she is because look at her dad. Like, did the apple fall right under the tree on this one? I think so. But nonetheless... So Isabel's had enough. He's acting crazy. She calls the police and he is arrested. He is gone, and now Isabel can focus her attention back to Linda. So since Andres is gone, and basically she has her laser focus back on Linda, she starts noticing and realizing some things and questioning some neighbors and friends, and she finds out, as we've known all along, that Linda and Antoine are still very much actively seeing each other and very much moving forward with their relationship. She finds out that he's been sneaking in and out of the house, that she's been sneaking in and out of the house. People have seen them all over town and they're very much together, like not wavering at all. So she is pissed, P.O.'d. Another thing you don't want is a pissed off Latin mama. A pissed off Spanish mama is not good. Never a good thing. 
So at this point, the more Isabel clamp down and try to control Linda and keep her away, naturally, you guys all know what happens, the more Linda pushed, rebelled, and snuck around to see Antoine, and they just got closer. Her mother got more distant, and Antoine got closer. It always happens that way, and naturally, it happened here as well. So one night, while the two lovebirds are stealing some little bit of time together and Isabel is at work, <laughs> Antoine comes up with the idea that, you know what, they're tired of sneaking around. He's tired of sneaking around. And basically, they just need to get rid of the mother, Isabel, because if they do, Linda will get the house and they can stay there together and whatever money she has, and then they won't have any worries. And... This is a great plan in his mind. Okay, we, we're not going to go there, but okay. So then, Linda somehow miraculously has like two good brain cells rubbing together at this point, And she's like, no, like that's not going to happen. So she suggests, okay, let's just run away together. Or like I'm 18, literally in less than a few months, let's just wait and then I can go with you. But Antoine's not having any of it. He wants to get in that house. He wants to get any money or anything that might, you know, belong to Isabel that he could become financially wealthy with, which wasn't going to happen because they weren't not wealthy by any means. He might have got a couple thousand dollars, and that's literally it. But um, basically, he was like, no, we, we're not running away together. We're not waiting till you're 18, which is a couple months away. We're not doing any of that. We need to get rid of your mom because even if we wait and do all of that, your mom can still press charges from when I was having sex with you when you were a minor and I'll go back to prison. And do you want to lose me? Do you, do you want to lose me, Linda? Because you're on the verge of losing me, Linda. Like, this is how he's playing her. So... Of course, eventually, Linda caves, right? She caves because at the end of the day, the last thing she wants to do is lose the love of her little life. And when I say little, I mean young. The last thing she wants to do is lose what she thinks is the love of her life, okay? So as she's looking deep into Antoine's eyes, she agrees to help him kill her mother. <sighs> So for about two weeks, Antoine and Linda plan this murder. Now, they have a few ideas, but they're not sure. They're kind of just going to wing it. And about two weeks later, it's a hot summer night. Steam is in the air and death is in the air. They decide it's time. They are waiting for Isabel to get home from work. And they see Isabel's car pull up. And they're ready. Linda's in the living room and Antoine was in the bedroom hiding with a frying pan. Okay, a frying pan. Like y'all, okay, this is going to sound really shitty, but you guys had two weeks to plan this and the best you could come up with was a frying pan? Like, dang, give the woman a, a easy out. Don't make her suffer with the damn frying pan. Y'all already doing something that's jacked up enough. Frying pan? Could have thought of that in two seconds. You need two weeks to think of that shit. So Isabel walks in from the driveway and she says hello to Linda and she keeps walking. And as she's walking back towards the bedroom, she's ambushed and Antoine jumps out and hits her over the head with the frying pan so hard that police say the handle actually broke off from the frying pan. But this did not incapacitate Isabel. She was still able to run. She was still conscious. She was still lucid. So she runs away from Antoine towards the front door, which is when Antoine follows behind her. And as he's following behind her, Isabel runs smack dead into Linda, who's blocking the front doorway. What a biosh. Your, your mom's gushing blood from her head. I don't care what she didn't let you do. You're blocking the doorway for her to get out as she's spewing blood from her skull. Like, that takes another kind of sick person. That takes another kind of biosh to do. I'm sorry. Like, I, mm -mm. Mm -mm. 
So Antoine motions for Linda to get an extension cord out of his pocket, and she does, and she slips it around her mother's neck. With Antoine holding one side of the extension cord and Linda holding the other, so they're each on one side, and Isabel going like this, they start pulling backwards. Now, you guys have to get with me on this page. Isabel is kneeling down. Linda's on one side, Antoine's on the other. They have this extension cord around her neck, and they're pulling tight, and she's, I'm sure, looking at her daughter. So she's looking up at her daughter, as they are strangling the last living breath out of her. And I cannot imagine what kind of cold, callous, calculated monster you have to be to look at, be able to look in your mom's eyes while you're killing her. And what Isabel must have been thinking, watching, looking into her daughter's eyes as she did this. Like, I cannot even imagine what this lady felt, y'all. Like, that is absolute insanity i cannot even begin to wrap my mind around that moment right there like i can't i can't do it so as if that wasn't enough they add insult to injury so now isabel is presumably dead but antoine and linda aren't quite sure so they drag her body to the bathroom they fill the bathtub up with water and they hold her under for a good amount of time to ensure that the deed is done right Right. So now they have this body and they have to get rid of it. But Linda, being the genius that she is, said that once she saw in a movie that they doused the body with muriatic mur, mur, acid. I hope I'm saying that right. But anywho, so she saw that once the body was doused with that, that it just disintegrated like psst. You guys seen it in the movies, right? Except that does not happen in real life at all. So when they do this, naturally, nothing freaking happens. So after about an hour of absolutely nothing happening and them watching an acid that is used to like clean like mold and pools and like grime and bathroom, and they realize this is not doing anything to her skin. She's not going anywhere. They really start bugging. So now... Antoine's like, okay, forget this. Let's put her in a tarp, roll her up. We'll drive her out to the woods, to the forest somewhere. We'll dump her in a spot that I know about. No one will ever find her. We're good. We're solid. Let's go. So they take her out of the tub, extension cord still around Isabel's neck, dead, and wrap her up in a tarp, drive 20 miles out past West Palm Beach into a very wooded and secluded area, and they drop Isabel off for life for they, they drop her off that's it they pull off the road Antoine walks into the wooded area about 50 feet and just lays her down like they don't think to bury her get anything off of her like extension cords still around her neck um they don't even try to hide her they just like set her down and they're like deuces we're out of here let's go live our life like y'all are Y'all just get dumber by every move that you make in this story. Like, what in the actual hell is going on? So now they race back to the house, and they're happy. They're thinking about all the freedom they're going to have to be together, to love one another, to do as they wish. They have the house to themselves now. They can just ride out into, you know, never, never land and do whatever they want, right? So they're, like, rushing home. They're trying to clean everything up, make sure all the evidence is put away, any signs of a struggle, like there is some blood and stuff because obviously she got whacked with the frying pan as per their first great plan but um they don't even care they don't care about anything they're like we're good we're solid let's go be together okay so now they're home they're cleaning once everything is settled they're like living it up they're in this house they're having parties they're drinking they're taking pictures they're like basically a young new couple that just moved into their first home and that is what they're acting like right And now they're even freaking closer, y'all, because now they're like, we're Bonnie and Clyde, like ride together, die together, Linda and Antoine for life, baby. Like, 
now they're really bonded because they've committed this horrendous crime and they're just they're they're bonded they're tied to each other now and they think that they are like ride or die gangsters that they're good but as all the partying continues and the nosy neighbors start to peek around because remind you guys that the neighbors knew about the situation. Isabel had talked to many of them and gotten the information and the little tease about what was going on. So they knew that not only was Antoine not welcome there and, you know, Linda not allowed to be with him, but also they knew that there's no way in hell that even if he was out of the picture and just showed up at the party, that Isabel would be okay with her daughter having these parties. So now their antennas are like, you know, like something's going on. Not to mention the fact that nobody had seen Isabel and Antoine was full-blown living in this house with no regard for what anyone thought. Full-blown on the porch, smoking a cigarette, no shirt on, wife beater, whatever, like living there. Like nobody was going to notice that. So once the neighbors start to get a little too nosy, Linda's like, okay, I got to think of something. So she's like, hmm, let me beat them to the punch, right? So she calls the police and mind you guys, this is just a few days after and says, Hey, my mother is missing. We had a terrible fight. She took off and I don't know where she is and I haven't seen her. Now at this point, Linda offers up a scenario where she says that because, you know, her father's in jail because the mother put him there um, over that fight that they had a while ago. It must have been like a domestic or whatever it was, but he was still in jail. So because he was in jail, she was just devastated. She was going through it and she was like, you know what? I'm just out of here. I'm going to leave. I can't take it anymore. And she flew to Texas to be with some family, like some extended family. And, um, you know, she's worried. And so because she's 17 years old, the police are like, okay, you know, we're going to look into this because you're here by yourself and you're, you know, a kid and you're obviously worried and whatever. So they, they look into it. As the police are looking into it, a full week goes by and Linda doesn't hear anything back. So she's so excited. She's like, okay, I filed the report. I've done my part. I've done what I need to do. I've covered my tracks with a paper trail. They think she's in Texas. My dad's in jail. Like we're all good. Right. But not so good is what I'm going to say because a week and a couple days after, some land surveyors are walking through an area that is going to be constructed soon with some like shopping mall, condominiums, like whatever it is. And they're surveying the land and lo and behold, what do they stumble upon? But no, of course, Isabel Pedroza's body. But because of the heat and the area in Florida, the humidity and the time that the body has been out there, even though it hasn't been years, but it's still very humid and hot in Florida, especially in this area near, you know, down south going towards the Everglades and the Keys, the body's super badly decomposed. So detectives have no ID. They have no way of even having a general direction to go in. So they start like scouring all the missing persons reports. And when they do this, they get a possible hit because when Linda filed the missing persons report, I swear to God, this girl was like her own worst enemy. She basically turned herself in. She might as well have walked in and said, I did it. Here I go. Here's me. Because she gave them pictures of her mother, Isabel, for the missing persons file. And there was no other way to identify Isabel except for from these pictures. Because in the pictures, she was wearing the same jewelry as she was when she was found as skeletal bones. So the bones were wearing the same jewelry as the picture that Linda gave police. Like, Linda, I mean, the frying pan situation was bad enough. Now you mean to tell me that they find a body that they can't ID and have no idea what's going on, but the picture you gave them has the same jewelry on that the corpse has on? Like, you did not want to get away. You can't tell me you wanted to get away with this. You cannot convince me that you wanted to get away with this murder, Linda. You wanted to go to prison. I don't care. Subconsciously, something like the law of attraction. You manifested your arrest because everything you did moved you into the direction of getting arrested. Like, come on, man. What the hell's going on with you? But I'm glad she did. I don't condone this at all. Like, kill your mom. You need to rot. Like, I'm not with that. I love my mama, so... <laughs> So this is where the story gets really funny, you guys. And I, I don't mean to be insensitive, but this is where the story gets like, damn, Linda, as if the frying pan and jewelry scenarios weren't enough. Now freaking this, right? So 
Investigators are, of course, going to investigate Linda a little bit because it's just a weird situation and some of the neighbors had mentioned the Antoine thing going on and all of that, but honestly, they were not focused on her, okay? There wasn't any extended family around pushing for police to make an arrest or find anybody. This was not a high profile or high priority case. So, Linda was on the radar, but only like as, you know, protocol, only because that's what you did. You looked at family members and people closest to the victim. So detectives came over to do their official like pre-interrogation of Linda and see what they could fish out of her. But they weren't going to go very far. And as soon as they did what they had to do and asked about, you know, the mother and the few questions that they had. They were going to be on their way. So they sat down. So Linda puts on a show. They actually believe her. But, you know, because they have to follow protocol and procedure and all of that, they say, can we search the house, like, for any evidence or anything that might help us find out what happened? Because naturally, you know, she was here last. This was the last place she was seen alive. And... We need to just do this, right? So Linda's like, okay, they search up and down. They look, they do everything they need to do and find zilch. They come up with diddly zilch, right? They are on their way out the door. Okay, you guys, they're on their way out the door, closing the book on Linda. She's not a suspect. She's donezo. She's like, good. And what happens? They hear a little door like, a door opening and closing so they're like because they thought they were alone in the house with Linda so when they hear that they turn around and what do they see they see Antoine Antoine coming out of the mama's bedroom with no shirt on and some boxers really does that not trump the, tr the frying pan and the jewelry because it does in my book so now they're like skirt let's turn around because why the hell would this grieving daughter essentially like a couple weeks after her mother's been murdered and you know they really only have each other why is this guy who neighbors have confirmed the mother did not like in the mother's bedroom presumably taking a nap and now coming out like all foggy eyed and sleepy like he just got the best rest of his life like while the daughter is out here with this waterwork show like what in the actual hell is going on so they're like wait a minute like what is this what's up da -da 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 -da. like you're who and at this point they think it's Antoine but they're not sure so he lets them know they ask Linda like why is he here? Why is he sleeping in your mom's room? Why is he like, what's going on? You know, and so Linda tells him, oh, like, he just came to stay with me because since I'm underage, you know, I, he didn't want me to be alone. We love each other. Da, 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 da. So this is not sitting well. Her story is not sitting well with police. They're not liking this explanation at all. So now antennas are up. All the suspicions that were geared towards you know, somebody just, some kind of foul play happening with Isabel on the street. Now it's shifting. And it's shifting from that one moment in time when that boy, that man walked out of that bedroom like he owned that damn house. So now investigators have a super weird feeling and they decide, you know what? Let's formally bring them in for questioning. Now, at this point, They've been there a few hours. They're sticking strong to their stories. But like in most cases, it's not a Matlock moment or a Perry Mason moment where you get them on the stand and it's like, oh, you, you're wrong. You did it because you wore a wig that day or something crazy like that, right? It's never like that. Basically, they broke Linda down. And after hours amongst hours of interrogations and questions, Linda finally caved when she started to be shown pictures of her mother's decomposed and ate up body. She caved and she basically, of course, um, told them that it was Antoine and gave her version of the story. 
she said he was the mastermind. She said Antoine was the one that did everything. And for the small part that she played, that he made her do it. And basically, she was scared of him. And you guys know how all of that goes. You're terrified of the person, so you do it. And then you become an unwilling participant, but nonetheless a participant. So they're both arrested and charged with first-degree premeditated murder, which in Florida is punishable by the death penalty. And when Antoine finds out that his his, you know, Bonnie has turned, um, basically he decides to cut his own deal and spin his own story. He says that she's the mastermind and that basically it was all her idea and he kind of just went along for the ride because she said that the mother Isabel had some money in the house that he could have at the end of all of this and so on and so forth but it was pretty much all her. So now they're both pointing the finger at each other. His love wasn't as strong for Linda and he pretty much just did it for the money. Now he cuts a deal and accepts not going to trial if they take the death penalty off the table and give him a 20 year sentence in exchange for his testimony against Linda. So if he testifies against Linda that she's the mastermind and she did all of this, then he would get a 20 year sentence and that would be the end of everything, right? So he accepts this offer, takes the 20 years. Once Linda finds out that she's slated to go to trial and that Antoine is going to testify against her and that they were going to charge her as an adult with the death penalty, penalty, what? With the death penalty, <laughs> not funny. With the death penalty being the punishment, she decides to cut a deal of her own. She decides to plead guilty, and the state's position was that she was the more culpable person because it was her mother. She tried to cover up the crime. If she would not have ever introduced Antoine into her mother's situation, then they would have never crossed paths. The connection would not have been made. And in the state of Florida, the person that actually links the victim and the perpetrator is usually the one that is considered the mastermind that's how it works in florida i don't know about other states so linda was actually sentenced to 40 years for second degree murder she was also sentenced to 30 years for conspiracy to commit murder and then she was sentenced to an additional five years for lying about a murder so this is a total of 75 years. However, all three sentences, the 40 years, the 30 years, and the five years were all run concurrent. And concurrent, if you don't know what that means, means that they will all run parallel and at the same time. So long story short, she is serving a 40 year sentence, okay? So Antoine Wright was released in 2018. And Linda is slated to be released in 2036, if you look her up right now. But that is only a TRD, which is a tentative release date. She will be out, if I remember correctly from her saying, in 2031 or 20... No, I'm sorry. She is going to be out in 2030 like the end of 29, the beginning of 30, right? So about Linda, Linda is very good with officers. She's a very pretty girl and she has a nice body. So, um, you know, she never had kids or anything. She went to prison when she was 17, almost 18 years old is when she went to the county jail. By the time she got to prison, she was 18. So she's kept up with herself. She's a very pretty girl. Um, she is very good at manipulating and finessing officers. She has had several relationships with officers throughout her time, which is a lot of the reasons she's been shipped around from prison to prison. She always, always, always has a girlfriend and um, is usually very, very attached, like she was with Antoine, to that particular person and basically has a marriage-like relationship with them inside of the prison. They're usually very long and they're usually very volatile. I watched her one time in a room, knock down, drag out with this girl that she was dating. And the girl was more of a, like a stud, like a guy looking girl. And they were literally choking each other. I mean, they were beating the hell out of each other. And she just walked out of the room and like adjusted her shirt and 
fixed her hair, tamed it down a little and kept it going. Like she likes that kind of shit. She really likes chaos and she really likes that type of dysfunction she works well in it it makes her feel something i don't know what um she i know does have did have some relations with her father i believe no i don't believe i know that her father passed away at some point in time a few years ago like maybe like five or so And um, before that, she was talking to him and she was close with him. But after that, she has absolutely nobody. So she really, really clings to the people that she becomes connected with in prison because it's it's real. It's serious. Um, she had a pen pal that was overseas. Um, she has tons of pen pals. She's on a lot of pen pal websites. She gets a lot of money from them. She's very well taken care of. She never wants for anything. She did finish her education in prison and she has had very good jobs. It's very well put together and that is how she's viewed by like staff and outsiders. As far as inmate relations go with not her girlfriends but just regular like us people, she... <laughs> She is still not very favored by the other inmates in the prison because she's very snobby, but most of all, she is a big, big liar. She's a big time liar. Um, she's very manipulative and she's very condescending in the way she speaks to you. And basically, she just has a real stank attitude. OK, she actually needed help and needed inmate support. She's not going to get it because she's just not well liked or generally liked by the inmates because she's not kind. But um, I personally had a falling out, which ended pretty not so good. Um, and we kind of steered clear of each other after that. Now, I will say this. As far as her case goes, Linda said that her defense for killing her mother, which was so freaking out there, was that her mother was abusive physically, emotionally, mentally, verbally, like all of the abusives, okay? She said that her mother beat her, that her mother isolated her from the world. I don't know if you guys remember that case where the mother had Munchausen syndrome and was trying to make like the daughter had all these illnesses and whatever. She said like her mother was doing all this crazy stuff to her. She said that they were like kind of like of the Mormon faith, but not Mormon, but they just like didn't believe in any holidays. She said she never celebrated one Christmas, one birthday, was never shown one sign of love, one day of affection, one hug, one kiss, one I love you, nothing. She says that is why she is cold and calculated. It is not because she is a narcissistic sociopath. She is, but she said that's not why. She said she was never shown anything that a child was shown, and she was literally never exposed to a regular childhood. Whenever Linda would cry in prison, it was very bizarre. It was usually only when she was going through something with her girlfriend. It was very bizarre because she would be making all of the sounds and all of the motions, but you never saw any water, like any tears. It was like, <laughs> but there was like never any tears. It was like really strange. And people were like, we would talk about this. It was bizarre as hell. Um, but she basically blamed it all on Isabel and said that she never experienced a gift. She never experienced a hug. She never experienced one I love you in her entire life. She was abused, and that is why she snapped on her mother and had to get away, okay? And this was her defense for all of her appeals. This is her defense in prison, just like on a moral ground, like in a conversation where she's trying to defend, you know, her actions. And pretty much that's what she stands by to this day. She says that she's just royally effed up because her mom was royally effed up. And I'm not doubting that her mom was a controlling, overbearing, crazy lady. But I think that Linda is reaching and stretching a little bit as far as the story goes and really putting some like seasoning on this story to make it sound better because nobody saw any of this. It's all by Linda's accounts. Okay. So. That is the story of Miss Linda Pedroza. And, um, oh, 
I also forgot to mention, her plan when she gets out is to find a rich sugar daddy that will take care of her because she's still pretty enough and her butt is still big enough to make that happen. So, you guys, bolo, because she's coming for y'all's wallets, okay? But anyways, that is the story of Miss Linda Pedroza killing her mother for love, a.k.a. because she snapped because her mother abused her. OK, you guys, let me know what you think of the shorter version. Let me know if you like it better. Let me know what you guys think with my different style this time, because I don't personally love it. But if you guys like it better, I can switch it up. I just want to do a shorter video to see if you guys liked it better. OK, but if you enjoyed this, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It's free for you, but it helps me out a lot. And thank you guys so much for coming to sit through another video with me, okay? I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't and you like my content. I don't know if the notification bell works, but I do put one video out every week at some point in time. Can't get right to it, you know, on a certain day. So I can't schedule them and say Tuesdays, but once a week I will have a video up and I have stuck to that. So Love you guys. Hope y'all had a great Thanksgiving, and I will see y'all in my next video. Ho, ho. I can't do my spin because I'm in a chair that's red and it doesn't move, but I just thought it was cute because it matched, so I can't spin, but I'll do, like, something for y'all, okay? So I love y'all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. That was lame. Okay. <laughs>